All right, here we go. Welcome to the Juice Radio Talk Show. 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 Reality TV, church free news. Let's talk heavy love and marriage lifestyle. Come and talk with us. Come and share with us. With us. Come and laugh. COVID special guests, you should be following your leaf. Bless, subscribe on YouTube, listen on podcasts. We live on IG and Facebook. This episode is sponsored by Truth and Triumph Ministries. Well, good afternoon, good day, whatever the good is. Hello, everybody. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Well, hello and welcome back to a wonderful Money Monday series with Pastor Tawana Grant. Let me tell you, I'm so happy you are back. I'm so happy and excited. I'm excited to be here. You guys, we're continuing our series talking about finances and money management, businesses and all of this. You guys, we're giving it to you free now. Call your friends, co-workers, everybody and let them know. We're about to have the conversation. If you missed our previous videos, go check them out. We talked about credit, a whole vast array of credit information, as well as bankruptcies. We talked about a lot of that as well. This series that we're talking about now is business. And listen, if you did not see the first video, check it out. Today's topic, we're talking about business tips coming up with a business idea. Yes. Now, I love this, Pastor Grant. Let's go ahead and jump into it. And how are you doing today? I'm doing fabulous. Happy Monday, everyone. Thank you for joining us today on the Jews Radio and Talk Show, <laughs> where we are giving you information on today yeah. about starting your business, coming up with that kind of great idea. And mm -hmm. I really uh, love this topic because a lot of times people don't know where to start, right, Regina? Mm -hmm. and, and they're like, I, I want to do something different. I want to be self-employed. I want to be an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. And it might be those of you who have that desire, but just haven't thought about what is next. And I think that's really what you ask yourself. What is next for me? Normally, I'll say for me, it was just natural. Some of the things that mm -hmm. the Lord just brought to my mind, that this mm -hmm. is a good business to go in because I saw a demand and a need. And so mm -hmm. normally, that's why business is formed, because there is a demand uh, for a certain product or service, and then you decide, I have the gifting or the anointing to do that, or I have a desire to do that, and then you would move out and launch out and getting information about that. A lot of times I always say, look at what you use. What, what do you use, and where do you see an opportunity that you can enhance it? Exactly. What can, what can you enhance? I would say also, what is your anointing? What do you do that makes it easy for you so that maybe you can make it easy for others? I, I mentioned when I was teaching Sunday school yesterday, I said, think about Betty Crocker, who was making cookies and baking cakes and never thought probably that it might turn out to be a multi-million dollar business and for generations, right? Sure. Look at others who've started out businesses just from the concept of a need. What, and those are really the ones that oftentimes last because the need doesn't go away. So right. what, is that need? what is that service? Uh, what is that uh, opportunity that others will pay you to fulfill? Think about it. Uh, people who have their own business and they are uh, home cleaning, home mm -hmm. carpet service, uh, they do repair. Uh, some of those things that they naturally do, car repair, home mm -hmm. uh, renovations. These are people who became gifted and oftentimes those skill sets are passed down. <laughs> Generations, uh, they're bringing their children with them and they're learning them the trades. And mm -hmm. so think about that, sometimes it might be a trade that you might want to go in. Uh, and so, you know, that's just an initial idea. What's next for me? Meaning how can I take what I already know how to do, what I'm already skilled at, and take it to the next level, make it available to others. Uh, so that would be my first thought. Look <laughs> at something that you naturally enjoy. What I does love it mean to enjoy? I love that because if you enjoy doing it, you're not going to mind waking up every morning. You're not going to mind putting the work into it. I love it. And you know what else I enjoy? Latoya and Aaron being here joining us in the chat. Hey, Latoya. Welcome. 
Hey, hey, Aaron, thank you so very much for being here. Aaron's reminding everybody to click, please click the like and subscribe and share button, you guys. It's free information. And all we ask is that you click the like and subscribe. That's, you know, that's all we're asking. Also, she's reminding you all who are watching to follow Pastor Grant on her church service. Listen, her ministry is amazing. And you can follow if you're not local. You can go on their Facebook page. It's My Father's House Pentecostal Church. If you're local, they're right there in Riverdale, Georgia. You guys check them out. They're an amazing, amazing group. And let me tell you, you're going to be blessed when you go there. I guarantee you're going to be blessed. I love it. Well, thank you all. Listen, those who are watching, if you would like to have some questions asked, go ahead and drop it in the comment section and we'll try our best to get to it and answer it as best as we can. If we don't have the answer to it, we will research. Yes. We give you that information because we want to make sure that we're giving you valuable information that is accurate. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we talked about leverage your skills. So one of the next ideas I would say is, is there an existing business again that you can take to another level? Um, we talked about that a little bit before that there's more than one hamburger shop. So there yeah. has to be a differentiator between you and the other person that make people choose yours. Right. Ooh. And so whether it is a food that you are a person who loves to cook, uh, maybe you're a person who loves arts and crafts, you create, you're creative. Maybe mm -hmm. you make clothing. Uh, who is it that would want to have your specialized tools? You know, think about it. Long time ago, plus size or full of size had difficulty finding clothing. But look yep. at it now. Um, the market is full. So somebody recognized that there was a demand and that people would pay for it. Mm. And so they went after that. So it's not like starting over new. That wasn't the first thing making clothing. Um, but now you're looking at a segmentation to which uh, there's a huge demand for. Think about wedding. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. People who've gone into making wedding dresses. Uh, there, That's a billion dollar business. And Ooh. so they didn't start doing something new. They've been making wedding dresses. That's but what right. they did was they found their own art and craft. They found their own specialty, their own niche. Uh, that others would pay for. Uh, maybe right. it's the different styles. Again, maybe it's the fuller sizes that others did not um, really operate in that lane or weren't skilled in that lane. Or maybe it's the details that they add. Maybe it's the fact that they're all originals. Oh my God. Mm. Maybe it's the fact that when you ask for a dress from me, it's going to be yours. There won't be another one just like it. And so oh. again, looking at what's already there and how can I take it to the next level? Something better, something different so that others will want to buy from me. How do I separate what I do from what others do. Doesn't mean that you can't do it too. I hear a lot of people say, well, stop everybody doing that. Not everybody. Not I'm, everybody. <laughs> not everybody. But if that is the gifting that's laid on your heart, how can you differentiate yourself so that you get your segmentation? I always say, I say this personally, I don't need everybody. I just need the people intended for me. And so there are millions of people. So you don't yeah. need everybody. You just need that segmentation that will allow your brand to grow. And then I from know. that, the Bible says, don't just despise small beginnings. So from right. that, when you push it, then you push the envelope. But you have to get started somewhere. So if mm -hmm. that's in your heart, again, if it's just in your heart, it's just a dream. Now mm -hmm. you got to make it a reality. Now you have to put it down on paper. And so what we're sharing today is opportunities for you to start really thinking about it and now pulling those ideas, those concepts into a plan. You need a plan. Yes. Um, if you have a plan, you've already planned to fail. You've heard Ooh. that. Right. So yeah. it's important that you have a plan and that you start working on it. Um, focus plus consistency leads to progress. And so Love you want to have progress. You want to move it forward, but you have to do something. Uh, you mm -hmm. have to take it from in your mind, you know, and then start having some conversations, maybe with some people who are in that line of business, some people who know more about it, how to get it started. Maybe even having dialogue. I used to do this, uh, Regina. I would have what I consider to be informational coffee chats. Wow. Let us catch up. Let's let's catch up. I want to get information. I'm not trying to take your idea, but I have an idea and it's very similar or something like yours. And I just want to understand how do you get started? Or mm -hmm. what do you do that made you uh, successful? Again, you learn from others and some of the roadblocks that they hit. Maybe it can prevent you from hitting those, right? And so Absolutely. it's like learning those lessons from others, iron sharpening iron, but being willing to ask. A lot of times. Mm -hmm. We have ideas, but we don't want to ask. What do you think about that? We should yeah. ask others and get information and impartation from those who may know uh, some people. Sometimes your net worth 
is your net worth, your network, your network. The people you know are your net worth. These people who have ideas, these people who have connections, you might not be connected, but guess who you're connected to? Right, the right. The person you're connected to is the person who's, who has the number of the person that you need to reach, but they don't know you need it. And so sometimes we have to be uh, prayerful and ask God to reveal to us who we should expand our dream with and share with so that they can enable us to win. So that's mm -hmm. my that's my next idea. Think about what's already out here, right? And how can I take it to the next level? So one, starting with your own, um, your own anointings, your own skill sets. How can you make that uh, out there in the demand area, out in the marketplace, how you can make it viable and necessary for others to pay for you to do it? For them. Mm -hmm. And then the next one is think about what you already use, what you already enjoy, but you know, with some deficits, you know, there's sometimes we do some things and we say, listen, it could be better if they did it like this. It be maybe it would be better if it had a hook on it. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. You know how sometimes people have taken something and said, let me put a hook on it and how that just blew up. Or sometimes how people said, let me put a string this way. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you, know, a purse, you know, a carry bag and just how things evolve that next evolution, that next yes. uh, release that went out, it was better than the last one because they learned from their market survey. Here's what the people are saying. Yes, that's good, but it would be even better if you did this. And so they modified. And so sometimes uh, in what we started out as our initial dream, our initial idea for a business, think about how do I need to modify it so it makes it even more valuable that's in the right. market. That's because right. you can have a product or service, but if nobody wants to buy it, you're not going to win. So, mm. you know, the best thing is to have something that uh, others want to purchase. Others That's want right. to leverage. Others are willing to pay you a fair price for your service or your That's product. Right. And use your skills that you have already. Um, there's a lot of people right now. Listen, social media, Internet, all this technology stuff is needed right now. And there's a lot of people that don't have the skill sets that you have. So you may want to use your skills of, of this technology world and, and help somebody, you know, maybe go up there and say, I can help you, you know, create a, a Facebook page or YouTube page, or I can help you um, access certain things on your computer or something like that services as well. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be a product that you want to sell. It could be your services that you can do yes. To, yes. to help someone. There is a lot of seniors right now that um, need help with, uh, I always say, you know, mowing the lawn and stuff. I mean, it's so, something so simple, but somebody needs to do it and help them with their home and, you know, cleaning or whatever, or just sitting with them. Let me tell you, there's companies that will pay you to sit with a senior. Yes. There's companies that will pay services you. On that. Yes. But find out what your skill set is and know that you can do it. Know that you yes. can do it. And be proud of what it is you're doing. And, you know, once you once you really get that that LLC, which we're going to talk about that as well. And once you get that name reservation and, you know, you get you're so proud of it and, and it's like a baby. You want it to grow and, you know, you're so excited about that. But before you do all of that, you've got to have a business idea that. Yes. You want. And let me tell you. Pastor Grant, I did this with so many of my businesses. When you go on to Georgia Corporation, there are several entities that I have, names that I have. Because as you're going through the process, you may think of one thing and you're like, man, maybe maybe I'll change it. I'll do this. You may change it, something, whatever, you know. I, you, you know, go through the process. So be okay if you have to change up some stuff. It's yeah, okay sometimes there's something similar. You might have to make a little bit of a modification, but that's just part for doing business, right? That won't stop right. you from moving forward. So like we said, if it's your skills, look at a yes. business that can level your, leverage your skills. If it's an existing business, look at how can I make it better, make it different so that right. I create a demand. And then another idea is that what problem is available today that I can solve? That's um, it. A lot of business came out of just solving a problem, mm -hmm. um, solutioning. Uh, think about just coming out of COVID, some of the things that expanded just because of the phase we were in. Think about the home deliveries, how Instacart yes. just bloomed and blossomed, how Amazon, although a well-known name, yes. just tripled in numbers, right? Because of the demand and the season we were in. Think about the face mask. 
Oh my yes. God, I never thought it'd be a time when people were making masks and handmade masks because they were leveraging the demand, right? Yes. So think about how do you solve a problem? Sometimes uh, it might be a small thing. Sometimes think about where you are. I, I always say, look at what you need. What is the problem you have that no one has solved already? Because no, you're not unique in that manner. If you right. have a problem, no, it's a few more people got the same thing. So think about that. What is it that you need? Think about how transportation um, became a huge oh my part gracious, of yes. new businesses that started. Why? Because people needed to get to appointments. People need to get to a uh, different size of town. And while buses and our community facilities uh, are available, those community transportations are available, sometimes they need an appointment to get somewhere at a certain time. Think about how Uber and Lyft and others have expanded in that lane on um, the personal transportation, even medical transportation. On um, the buses, a big one. See now a lot of people who mm -hmm. have started business. Why? Because they needed a problem. They had a problem and they could solve it. They looked at a way that could solve it that would be lucrative, uh, mm -hmm. that would have a demand that would supplement and support a business. So mm -hmm. think about that. What kind of problems do you have today? Or what kind of problems are you hearing in your community, in your network? Sometimes you might need to do a little survey. Maybe you might need to have a focus group. Pull the family together. <laughs> Get, on that's Zoom. Work. Get on Zoom. Pull, pull all your cousins together and say, listen, what kind of problems are y'all facing that maybe a business idea could solve? What is it? Because if you have 10, 15 people that have that same similar problem, no, they are thousands. And so that is an opportunity for you to create a niche role, a niche business so Absolutely. that you can solve for that. Maybe it could be something that, while it is prevalent on another side of town, is not available in your area. Is that wow. a problem you can solve? Yes. Right? Is that a problem? Mm -hmm. Now, maybe I can supplement. You know, some areas have a lot of beautiful stores. Some areas don't. Some areas have a lot of beautiful boutiques. And maybe you have to drive 30 minutes to get to one. Pray about it and see, is that something that you feel like a supplement in your area? What is mm -hmm. it that you and I know hundreds of other people are driving to the other side of town or the nearest big city to gain when maybe if you did it in your local area, you would You're be right a niche for the people right there, right? You don't have to get everybody, just the mm -hmm. people intended for you. I, I want to encourage you, but sometimes we feel like, oh, it's got to be a multi-million dollar idea. It can turn into one if you That's work right. it. The That's vision right. will work if you work it. And so we're, we're just giving you ideas about some of the things you can think about but for a business because we recognize there's still opportunity. Uh, there's, there's a lot. Opportunity. There's opportunity for you to move out and to launch out into the deep and do what God has called you to do and be a blessing. Absolutely. Um, lots of needs that you could solve. Absolutely. If I was at uh, my hair salon one day and this gentleman walked in and he asked the owner of the hair salon, he says, can I wash your windows? And she she told him, she says, OK, what's your price? And he gave her a price and she said, sure. And he washed the windows and she paid him and he went to the next business. And I said, well, let's look at this. That's and you right. would never, I would never have thought, OK, she doesn't own the building. She's leasing it. It's in a, in a strip mall. But this guy was like, listen, I want to wash your windows. And not only did he wash the outside, he washed the inside. And he yeah. removed her, her flyers off the thing and he put the flyers back and she paid him and he went on down to the next one. I said, well, that is very creative and smart. Yes. Something so a need. Yes. Solving a problem. Absolutely. Making someone else's life more efficient. Mm -hmm. I always say you pay for convenience. Mm -hmm. And so maybe it's the convenience of what your problem solving will do. Think about how do you think valet parkers came about? Come People on, didn't man. want to walk all the way down there. They didn't want to go to the other, uh, to the building where you have to park your car. They'd rather scoot up there and listen, I'm paying for the convenience. Somebody is benefiting from the convenience of someone not having to go park in the parking deck or mm -hmm. going to park all the way down at the end of the parking lot. And so mm -hmm. there's some matters, right? Solving a problem that is a matter of convenience. And so yes. think about it that way. That is a awesome idea. That's how washing cars came about. People can yes. always have their own car, but who want to? <laughs> Not I. Not right, I. Right. <laughs> Those numbers started to shrink down. And so again, that was a problem solving. And, and yes. it and is a matter of convenience. It provided convenience somewhat. Uh, we yes. have now people who are doing food prep. 
Uh, it's not that people don't want to cook, but they want good meals. And so somebody's leveraging that problem solving that they want a good, healthy meal, but they don't have the time, but they have the resources and Let they're willing really to pay true. for the convenience. That's a huge thing too. Uh, I just went to a doctor's appointment this morning for a regular checkup. Thank God everything is good. But my Very doctor good. said this. She says that people need to watch their sugar intake. Yes. And so, you know, and she said, well, I'm going to give you this plan to make sure that you just keep everything in, in control and, um, you know, what things to eat. And meal prep is a really good thing because some people are like, well, I don't know how to shop or I don't want to grocery shop like that. I just want to take my food out and eat it. But they tell yes. you when you're preventing diabetes, they tell you do not eat prepared food from the grocery store. Yes. But you can eat prepared food from someone who is preparing it properly. Yes. And that will benefit that person who needs that. And there's a lot of uh, prep companies that are out there, but there may not be one in your specific area. Yes. You know? and, and you would be a great benefit to help somebody who's like, listen, I need to get my eating under control. I need to get my vegetable intake. I need my portion controls right. And that would be a great opportunity for someone to, to do that, advertise, put it out there. And we're going to be talking about marketing and all that stuff too, but you have to get the ideas. And there are, there are such a need, you're right, Holy Spirit. There are people right now sitting at home saying, I need this. I, I don't have time to do it or I can't do it. And I need somebody to do it. And you may be just that person that they're yes. looking for. Yes. I, I was thinking in my head when you were talking about businesses, there are some senior citizens. Uh, they, they can't get out to go to the hair salon, but they would love to have their hair done. Those of you who have hair salon businesses right now or those who will want to start up, you can go, you know, send your flies out, knock on the door and say, hey, I would love to, you know, help with your hair. Um, there are senior facilities that would be willing to work with you that you can come yes. in and say, listen, I, I would love to, you know, do what I can to help. Can I wash somebody's hair? Can I cut somebody's hair? Something. Just go to these organizations and see what, you know, they what they would allow and, uh, you know, create something. But there's somebody sitting at home right now that's like, I need this. Yes, yes. There's a need out there. And, and you are the person who can meet that need. And again, the idea is already in you or there's something you've contemplated and you just need to move out on it. You know, mm -hmm. faith without works is dead. So we can, again, have a thought of something, an idea, but it's just a dream and still, until you start working on it, until you start looking for it to come um, to realization, yeah. looking for it to materialize, it's going to take you to launch out and to act on it, right? That's and right. so that you can see it come to fruition. So I, I love that what you're saying. There are so many needs that could turn into yes. your own self-employment. Again, solving a problem. Uh, yes. there, there are problems everywhere. There's uh of things that you can do with our youth. Maybe you are uh, very interested in mentorship or teaching or STEM or any of those uh, available opportunities just to enable our youth and enable our senior citizens. Look at how can I do that? Because a lot of programs are also supported through the government, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's enabling our communities. So you can look at it, how can I do that and look for alignment on funding and an endowment. And so that it will support you as you operate this right. new business. So again, we're thinking outside of the box, uh, thinking about what do I have, right? Uh, what, what's in your hand? What's in your heart? What's in your mind? What do you already have that's available that you can use to be a blessing and to expand it even further? Um, Absolutely. I'm thinking about another idea is yes. build the same, but cheaper. Some things you can do, right? Uh, you can make it uh, more efficient and less expensive. And so people are always looking for the next evolution uh, of a product or service. How can I do it? Again, don't feel like because the uh, environment might already have a person who does that, that it's, it's solidified. There's no more room. Um, there can be room for you because you differentiate yourself. Maybe it's in pricing. And right. because you know how to do it, you know how to get with the right um, wholesalers or the right partners so that your pricing can be reduced. It can be less. And so therefore you're still making a good profit margin, but offering it for less. And so right. sometimes we have to be very creative 
and how we operate with our partners and in our industry and field. So that's why I talk about again, your net worth, your network is your net worth. The people you know can help you maybe in getting things at a more economical price. So therefore, in turn, you can lower it to your consumer, but still have the same profit margin. Yes. So how can yes. I do the same thing, but do it cheaper and increase my customer base, increase mm -hmm. my demand? Right. And just go around and, and talk to, you know, talk to people when you're out, you know, look at like, like Pastor Grant says, uh, there are several needs out there. There are several things that are already established. You may be able to make them better, like, like the ride share that, um, that are out here, people with the vehicles, um, you know, you get in a car, they take you one place to the other, Uber, Lyft, you may offer the service, but offer it better. You may have like, you know, nicer things in your car or more comfort in your car, whatever it is, you know, more entertaining or something. You may have that niche that is going to be better than what is out there right now. Just get established, get established and, and, and yes. do something, you know? I, I think that that is great. You know, one thing, uh, you write Holy Spirit, I don't, I haven't seen anybody do this. I have seen people walk dogs, but I have not seen anybody have a dog service where you drive a dog to a different locations. Like Uber oh wow, so that alone. would be different. Um, doggy transportation, right? Doggy transportation. Um, Somebody doggy, pick it up now. Take them to the vet. Take them to the vet, or take them to their grooming appointment, or take them to wherever they're going to be housed if that uh, right. person is going out of town. Uh, maybe they want you to just check in on them if they're gone for an extended stay. Sometimes people are going out of the country and mm -hmm. they just want somebody to swing by there and, and make sure everything is OK along with the home. So there are a lot of things. House sitting, you know, at one point yeah. wasn't even a big thing, but it is now. People right. are paying for others to come by and just make sure everything is well. You know, That's I was right. thinking about that, too. I saw a, a announcement on a gentleman who has a barbershop, but he specializes in special needs. Special Did you care, see that? I love that with you. Yes. yes. And so that might be something that you can offer because everyone doesn't have the personality or the uh, the gifting or the integrity needed to operate with those who have special considerations. Yes. That have a special, a way that you have to operate with them, ways that you have to maneuver them, ways that you have to be patient with them. And so that is a specificity that separates you from everybody else. Yes, and he's it doing gives a you your job. own market, your own segmentation that you can operate from, and not just cutting hair. Maybe it's also transportation for special considerations. Mm -hmm. I have a special, uh, maybe I've had a, a thorough background, I've had a thorough background check, I have security check, I have all those things necessary that you will feel comfortable to allow me to transport uh, an adult with special needs. Mm -hmm. Because you know, if, if it was me, I wouldn't want to call just a regular Uber. And they have special, I want them to, I want to know that this person it's understands mm -hmm. what they're operating with, right? And they have, right, the right background capabilities to do that well and do that with proficiency and do that with patience. And so maybe that is another segmentation of meeting a need. That's meeting right. Need, That's specializing right. yourself. That's right. That's right. I mean, there, there's so many different things that uh, people can do um, and just, you know, get out there and have conversations um, with, uh, you know, fellow people or just, you know, drive around and take a look, you know, walk around, take a look, you know, and, and just think, okay. And ask you right, who's been asked the Lord, Lord, what, what good yeah. ideas, what is, what is, what can I do? What is it that yeah. I want to be great at, you know, and, and just go for it. There are so many people that are cooking right now, but it does not mean that there's not room for more people that are cooking. There, right. listen, there is a great need still. You may want, thank you, Holy Spirit. That's good. You may be somebody that want to prepare lunches for the kids. Your business may be a lunch preparer where you prepare the, the, the lunches and you deliver them to the, the homes of the family. Say, here's your kids' lunches for the next week. All they have to do is grab their lunch and go so that parent don't have to prepare the lunches on a daily basis. I mean, there, there's so many different ideas, but just ask the Lord and he'll give you just like he's given us today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it doesn't have to be brick and mortar. That's what we're saying. You right. don't have to go out and get a building to start off with. Maybe it's a home-based business, again, that makes you a specialty. And as your client base in, increases, as the demand for your product or service increases, then you can launch out further. But what can you do that 
really, when you have something special and it's something people want, they will come to you. Yes, they you will. will. You will be a destination. Trust me. Woo. You will they be will a place that they up. say, I, I, because I can tell you this, uh, what Regina was just saying about people cooking food at restaurants. Listen, there's one restaurant that my middle son, he loves. He ride 45 minutes <laughs> when he's in town to get out there. Because that's, that's like his, his place. He loves it. And so there's some things that become an event because yes. of its great service or its great food or great attitude, great environment. If you create it, I know it was a movement that you say that, but if you build it, they'll come. <laughs> you know, they create the right atmosphere. If you create the right product and the right service, they will come. That's uh, right. Your name, you know, your reputation will be great. And that's what the Bible says. When you operate in excellency, when you operate with the right heart and mind, it will happen for you. But you got to work it. You got to work the vision right. and right. uh, you got to work the dream. Uh, and so we want to encourage you today not to be afraid. I think a lot of times fear prevents us from starting. But I want to encourage you, if you get started, you'll find that you will uh, you'll get some momentum. That's what we need to do. We need to start getting some momentum That's because it. a lot of us are sitting on a lot of ideas. We're sitting Ooh. on a lot of our creativity. We're sitting on a lot of the skills God has given us. And then we're holding on to it and we're forgetting it was intended to be a blessing in earth. It was intended for others. It was intended to bless you. Right. But it was also to be a blessing to the people that receive. And That's so when right. we sit on it, we are holding down. Uh, some of those things that can make life easier for others. Mm -hmm. uh, some, some of these things that can make things more efficient for others. Uh, think about it. When they uh, when we created the light bulb, it's because we was in the dark. When the dark came, you couldn't do nothing. They said, wait a minute. There has to be a way. Creativity, innovation. And so tell that. yourself, there has to be a way. It may not always be the way that you think it would, would be. That's why I said sometimes you have to modify the dream. Uh, sometimes you have an idea and a concept and you say, I Not say for me, when I first started one of our businesses, um, the Lord had impressed on me. I had seen it, never thought about doing it before. It was the uh, uh, risk reduction DUI schools. And I said, mm. that looks like something I love teaching. Teaching is me. Uh, and I wanted to expand in that. I said, so we could do that. And then while I was, we were working on that, my husband and I and my sister, we were thinking about that. I said, well, this is what the Lord told me. He said, be multi-stream. Don't just do that. Do that one. Do everything that they allow you to do uh, in the driver services uh, capability. So we started. We got the risk reduction DUI. We did the driver improvement. We did the uh, uh, the education portion of it. We did the behind the wheel. So driver education. We did everything that they allowed it. And mm -hmm. so, therefore, when you have multi streams happening, whichever one is operating, it moves well so that you're not single threaded, just one thing. And so, I want to encourage you if you have one idea and you find that that's not working, how can I modify this? How can I do exactly. this? Don't be so st st static on that one and stoic in the one thing that you feel like that that wasn't it. So, I'm done. No, mm -hmm. I'm hearing the Holy Spirit say, evolve. Grow from that experience. That. Try it again. Do it again. Think again. Yes. Uh, go outside of your, your box. Don't get boxed in on the one idea, that concept. Yes, right. that's just the beginning. Um, but you evolve. You innovate. You look for better, right? And so mm -hmm. I want to encourage you today that it's in you. Yes. <laughs> it is in you. That idea is in you. Sometimes you can take even where you worked before. Right. And you know what they've done and not taking any of that intellectual property by any means. But there are some areas. And I know this because I work in technology. Uh, there have been a lot of people who've left because they saw deficiencies in the field, in the field, not necessarily mm -hmm. in the organization. And they said, hey, I can I can do this. I can this. Do yep. this. Mm -hmm. I can fix this so that it helps many others. And so you can think about it. What is it you're doing? Again, we say, look at your own life. Do self-evaluation. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. that you know could be more efficient, that mm -hmm. you could add value in your field, in your mm -hmm. industry. Mm -hmm. How can you change it and modify it? And then you'll find your idea. Uh, you'll get that spark. I love it when entrepreneurs, yes. people have a, an idea and they're so excited about it. That additional zeal uh, is just rewarding all in itself. And so you, but you take that and now you say, okay, now let me work this idea. Let Let's me work, work it. See where God is going to take it to. Let me let me pray about this. Let me seek the Lord. Let me get wisdom and knowledge about it. You know, that's another thing I found too. We have ideas, but then we don't go any further, right? 
Don't we have to enable ourselves with wisdom and knowledge so that we know our craft? Yes. We want to know our craft well. We want to understand how do I execute this well? And so that takes effort and time. And so yeah. we're encouraging you today when we're talking about think about your next business idea, I think about it outside of the box. And don't always think that's me. Because sometimes we limit ourselves by saying, well, I don't know how to do that. You might not know how to do it, but God can send you the people who can enable you so that you can get it done. Woo! Let me tell you, you know? listen, up close. Yes. listen up close. I'm telling you, there's a lot of things that happen in my life where I thought, well, I need to do this. I don't know how. And God will just send somebody. Yes. You start listening to conversations. I could be out somewhere and I'm like, Lord, I, don't, I need to know this, this or whatever. And I'll just start hearing somebody conversating and it'll be right on time with what I need. Yes. <laughs> so you have to, you really have to fine tune your listening because God will send a word, but you really have to fine tune it. And just, you know, and then I'll just have a conversation with people. Well, you know, I overheard you having this conversation, you know, or either I'll be talking and somebody have come over to me and say, I over overheard you have this conversation, you know? Yes. And then, you know, they, what do you do? And I'll tell them what I do. And then, you know, it's interesting. And then, you know, you start doing, you know, deals with people like that also. But listen, you've got to not be afraid. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That's the part. Don't be afraid of the process. And yes. don't, think, don't think that you're not the one that could be the next big person or multimillionaire or what, what, whatever. My son, I had a conversation with my handsome son last night and he told me, he says, mom, he says, um, I'm going to be a millionaire. He says, I'm going to be a millionaire, yes. a multimillionaire. And I says, yes, you are. He says, no, mom. He says, that's my goal. He says, I'm making it my goal and I'm working towards it. And I said, absolutely. And if you don't have a goal that you're working toward, all you have is just a vision, but no real dream. Yes, yes, that's it. That's you got to work toward this and know that you're capable of doing it. There are some people that may look at other people and say, well, they're doing it. You know, I could never do that. You are, listen, you are them. I watched several movies of um, businesses. Like I watched the McDonald's movie, how McDonald's came about, which I was kind of upset because it, it was actually stolen from the, the two brothers. But I watched that from a business standpoint. I watched a movie about uh, Disney World and Mr. Disney and how he created that and the trials and tribulations and things he went through. But yet he didn't give up. Even though things were stolen from oh, him yeah. and the process, he still kept going because he had a vision and his dream was he was going to make that thing happen. And so we look at other people and we see them as very big, but understand there's, they started like where you start. Oh, you yes. Know? Everything you start starts like start. Everything yeah. starts start somewhere. So they did it. You can accomplish it too. Is it going to be overnight? Some happen overnight, but it may not happen overnight for you. But it does not mean that the next day you don't get up and work towards that goal. Like my son said, I am going to be a millionaire. And he means that thing. And he's working toward that thing. And I'm trusting and believing them too. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's so true that you have to have the desire, right? Yes. You have to have the willingness to be diligent in right. the thing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you have to wait until your due season. There's a timing that comes when yes. you're sowing. I mean, this is our time of tilling and sowing. This is our time of work. Uh, so you never go out and expect a harvest without having put in the planting. Uh, you got to till the ground. You've got to plant the seed and then you got to nourish it. You got to water it. Uh, you need to give what it needs to strength in order for it to grow. And the yes. same thing is when we have our own business. We've got to give it what it needs in order to grow. So we have the seed. We have the idea. Uh, we have the concept. We have the goal. Now we got to plan it in good ground. That means good finding ground. the right people or right uh, processes or right enablement, funding, getting that good ground ready. Okay, now, now I have good ground. So it is encapsulated in something that will give it the nourishment it needs to go yes, forward, sir. right? Yes, and so that's sir. that good ground nourishment that it needs to prosper in the thing that it was intended to. And so now we water it. You continue to give it that everyday nourishment. You know, I know some people who will start a vision and I say, well, what, what are you doing? Oh, well, I've been too busy. Okay. You, you don't have a business. <laughs> okay. You, you, it's just like saying, I got a baby. When was the last time you fed? I don't know. Okay. Oh, you, you got to give it. 
You cannot yes. stop the baby. <laughs> <laughs> you got to give it your dream, your goal, your vision, the right amount of attention. And it's yes. just like a baby when they're little, they require all your attention. Uh, they yes. require all your focus because they don't know how to operate on their own. Such as your small is your business when you're first getting started. When you're starting up, it requires all of your attention and all yes. of your commitment and all of your priority. And we have to be the first port takers and first givers when it's ours. Even yes. when you go to another company and you're asking for funding, they want to know what have you done, what have you put in, what time and are you committed? Because they want to know are you as committed as I'm going to be? Because That's if right. you're not committed, it won't make it. If, mm -hmm. if you are the CEO, the CFO, you're the originator, the creator, you've got to be committed. What you said is so important. And you've got to be willing to sacrifice. There's a sacrifice. sacrifice. You know, some business, as you said, are just God ordained. Oh, my God. It is a miracle. They get a miracle blessing. They hit at the right time and, it, and the yes. door just expands. Um, but then there are others that have to go through the process. You, even when they expand, they got to go through a process. Yes. Oh, my God. I heard of a person, and I'll never forget. Bishop Jakes had mentioned this about someone he helped. They wanted mm -hmm. to, to get a book out. I think I can't remember exactly what the product or service was, but because his name was attached to it, he mentioned it. And, and they didn't even have the infrastructure not to support that kind of demand. And wow. so sometimes we want to blow up, we want to expand, but you ain't ready. You ain't ready for that kind of growth. So that's why sometimes God will take us through something, the process, so that when we get to there, we're ready. Uh, that's why he's letting you get all these pillars in place, get all your information Amen. in place, get your, your infrastructure in place, get your team organized, get your team that's ready. Right. Because how many know you can tap up a reputation? Oh, my God. Talk about opening up a restaurant and your people not prepared to serve. Well, I'm like coming back. Mm. Talk about a restaurant and your cooks in the kitchen not ready to fix the food the way that that should be presented. They are not coming back. You're going to lose people. So that's why you'll see this a lot. When people start businesses now, they do what is called a soft lunch. Yes. What is a soft lunch? Give people the opportunity to work out the kinks in the kitchen. Work out the kinks in their serving. Work out the kinks in um, preparing with the client. Understand whether we need to modify, pivot, refine, mm -hmm. or scrap it. <laughs> mm -hmm. sometimes, sometimes you have to say, hey, they ain't even like that at all. Scrap it. Let's scrap take it. that off. Right. Mm -hmm. And so those soft launches are what makes you successful in the long term. And so Absolutely. sometimes we're trying to pace ourselves ahead. And so that's why I wanted not to have you discouraged because you're starting off slow. Sometimes it's just like the tortoise, tortoise and the hare. Yeah, he was faster, but he wasn't focused. Oh, he got that fast, but he wasn't focused. And he ended up losing. Um, yeah. But the tortoise kept his pace. Oh, my God. Focus plus consistency leads to progress. If you just keep your pace, if you just stay focused, if yes. you keep your mind on what you've intended to finish. That's what I say. A lot of people start, but a lot of people don't finish. Well, it's in the finish. It's in the finish. It's in getting to the expected end of this current vision. This doesn't mean that this is your last one because we already talked about evolution. What are you going to do next after you get this one done? After you get your first big marketing event? After you get your first big account? What are you going to do next? Oh, come What's on. Next? What's next? Yes. What's yes. next? And so that's what we're trying to encourage you today that you got to get started, though. You got to mm -hmm. start with the idea. You got to start with the concept. Uh, you mm -hmm. got to start with the action of commitment. Oh my God, you got to commit to that. Commit thing. Ooh, commitment it's not is a big thing. You commit. It's not it's a big thing. And, and listen, and and we all have have to do, go through this journey with building yes. um, these corporations and these entities. Thank you, Holy Spirit. These entities that we're building, and and I'm sitting here like I'm I'm sitting in the front pew of the church. I'm I'm like so focused on what you're saying right now, and I'm like, okay, Regina, we got to do better. We got to do better, Regina. Come on, you know. One thing I want, two things I want to point out also to the people is while you're doing these business, getting these business ventures going, honesty. Yes. You oh my must God. Maintain honesty Integrity. throughout the entire process. A lie will set your vision back or kill your dream. Amen. Now, I, know, I know a lot of people are like, well, you know, I just, you know, did this because, you know, everybody else was doing it. If it's not right, it's not legal. It's, it's not good. Let it go. Be like that tortoise. Trust the process. Yes. No matter how slow you think it is, as long as it's honest, because listen, I don't want people's visions and dreams that you work so hard to build up to be torn down because there was one little lie or one falseness 
that came and crumbled your whole entire dream. I want you to build businesses that are going to withstand and stand yes. every test and trial that will come it way because they will come. However, if you build on shaky ground, know that that ground won't hold it. But if you build on trust, mm -hmm. honesty, and integrity, it was it will be thank you, Holy Spirit, a firm foundation. Yes. Also, speaking of people who are are having these businesses, when you're going to hire, or when uh, you yourself, make sure that your customer service skills are fine tuned. My son said this to me. He says, "Mom," he says, "I've." I've gotten better with my customer service and my employee um, communication because I went to classes. Yes. He enrolled himself in Great classes indeed. to help with, with management and skills. He said, I had to fine tune my customer service skills, started reading books on it. You know, um, my daughter also, she said, mom, I had to check myself, you know, even when she works in a warehouse and she also does uh, driving for Uber and Lyft and all that stuff, too, because she's a multi streamer, too. And she said this. She said, mom, I had to learn my customer service skills are needed in every aspect, because when I'm driving people around, when you have in communication with them, you never know who you, who's going to get in the car. She says, I pick up so many celebrities. And I've got to be able to communicate with them properly. I'm like, you are absolutely right. So customer service skills, communication skills are very important um, with business. Because like Pastor Grant said, you don't want to have the, the cook ain't ready and the service ain't wed ready and your customer service skills ain't ready. Your whole business. Yes, yes. And your reputation <laughs> is tarnished, right? Tarnished. And so you get the reviews out there. And while you can come back, it takes time. And so why not start off well? You want to start off yeah. well. Your reputation does matter in business. Yeah. I want to encourage you that because people will know you and your name, your brand. Remember your brand. What mm -hmm. you're creating is a brand image. That means what do people refer to or think about when they see your name? Uh, right. What do they think about when they see the company name? Uh, it right. does matter. Brand imaging does matter. How mm -hmm. you market yourself. Know this. You're the first billboard. You're the first review. Uh, you are you are what represents your reputation and what you say. I love what you was talking about. Integrity is so key. Um, it people is. have to believe that you mean what you say and that yes. you will do what you've committed to. That's why I say commitment is so important. Um, mm -hmm. There have been times when, you know, integrity is the ability to do what you said you would do even when you don't feel like it anymore. Oh, okay, now. And so there are going to be times when you might not, as a business owner, you're going to be tired. Uh, there might be times when you have made a commitment to say, oh, my God. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you've made a commitment to something. You found out you should have charged more. But you know what? Integrity says, I have to hold my word. Hold my word. Before. I've been there before when I said, listen, <laughs> ooh, I didn't know it was going to take all this. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I'm committed because I said I would do it. And so because yeah. I said I would do it, oh, my God, I will break my neck. I, you know, sometimes I've overcommitted. I, I do much better than I used to a long time ago. Um, but, and, and, but I would say I have to be there because I said I would. Right. And so that makes the difference in integrity. And so when you're owning your own business, I love the fact that we're talking about that. you got to do some self um, uh, revelation, um, some self improvement, uh, some self growth. Right. Yes. You're going to have to work with people from all types of backgrounds, all types of experiences. And so you have to know how to carry yourself well. Not that you will always do well. I mean, we're going to make some errors. We're human. Um, but know how to say, I'm sorry. Uh, know how to apologize and rectify the matter. That's where adulting comes in. Uh, that's where CEO. You know, people think CEO is just the money or showing up. No, CEO takes responsibility. Uh, mm -hmm. When you're at the top, oh, my God, uh, it stops here. <laughs> mm -hmm. when, you, when you're at the top, you control how things flow from here. And so you have the ability to come back and rectify when things are not correct, when things are inappropriate. And so you have to own that. Uh, you have mm -hmm. to own that and be responsible to do that. And so that's just part of the role. We want you to have big ideas. We want you to do great things in the earth. But there's also a responsibility. Uh, it starts first with moving past the idea. This is your first responsibility. Move past the idea. Get off the couch. Stop sitting on it. <laughs> Stop letting time get by. Don't let any more time get by on That's your right. dream. Don't let any more time pass you by. Listen, it's for you. If you haven't seen other people run with it, it's because it's waiting on you. Uh, mm -hmm. It needs you to do it. It needs you to help it come to life.
Mm -hmm. And so we just want to encourage you today that it's in you. You can do it. Um, all You can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. Uh, right. You know, we believe in the foundation that if he started a good work in you, he's going to finish it. And so let him do it through you. And with the help of the Lord, you're going to win. You Amen. will win. It may Amen. be difficult, um, but we're not moved by what we see or how we feel. We move by what God has given to us. Amen. So we trust in that. I love that so very much. Pastor Grant, this has been amazing. I love it. For all of you who are watching, remember to subscribe to the channel of the Juice Radio and Talk Show. Follow Pastor Grant on her Facebook page. Uh, Aaron put it in the chat here. My Father's House Pentecostal Church. Thank She's in Riverdale, Aaron. Georgia. Listen, this is a Money Monday series. Grab your lunch and learn every Monday at 12 noon. Come on over here and subscribe to the channel. We're going to help build some entrepreneurs. Oh, Pastor Grant, I see them entrepreneurs coming in. I see them. Yeah. You know, I, see, I give us a bitch. I see Amen. them coming. Come on. You know, they're going to be like, listen, I grabbed my lunch and I, I learned and I built this business and got established. And, you know, I'm, I'm waiting to hear the great success stories of the people and the businesses that they have. Uh, remember, if you uh, did not watch our previous videos on the credit, watch that. Uh, we gave great information on that as well. Um, Pastor Grant, I, listen, I'm going to go ahead and testify. I done paid off two of my credit cards. Woo! Woo! Credit woo, woo. Cards. God is good. <laughs> focusing on, focusing and putting the ledgers together to pay off, you know, some of the others and, you know, and still have the savings. And, you know, so I'm, I'm grateful for this that we're learning. And I pray that you all are getting fed some nourishment. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Fed some nourishment. Yes. Videos And thank you so much, Pastor Grant, for your commitment, your dedication and your sacrifice to the channel. I know you're super busy. I know there's a lot more things that you could be doing, but you come on here every Monday and sacrifice with us. Listen, and listen, it's dedication. It's dedication. Yes. And you keep me focused because I'm like, I can't let Pastor Grant down. I got to be. <laughs> <laughs> so That's you keep me focused as well. Thank you so much for your dedication. I do pray that God will increase your finances because you're helping others to increase theirs. I, I, I pray that gift to you as well. Thank you all so very much. Listen, this has been wonderful. Thank you again. We're going to be back next week with another uh, nice tip on businesses. Y'all go get your notepad together now. Remember, if you're just tuning in, go back and rewind this video, watch the complete in its entirety, as well as other videos and get ready to prosper in Jesus name. In yes. Jesus' name, all right? Because he is able to do it. Pastor Grant, thank you so much. Let's go ahead and do you want to give the people some closing thoughts or, or you know, and after you do that, give them a, a quick prayer before we get out of here? Almost certainly. Yes. yes. So God bless you on today. We're so grateful you had an opportunity to join us as we talk about business ideas. Listen, it's in you. Uh, what he has planted in you, he's intended for it to grow. I thank God that he's a multiplier. He don't just add. <laughs> he wants to multiply in your life. And so we're encouraging you today. Thank God for Regina who allows us this platform to be able to share this information because we want to enable you to win in every area of your life and especially in your money. We want your money to be healthy and just like your soul as it prospers in the Lord. And so we want to encourage you today through prayer. So Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for all of those who joined us on today, those who will watch this live even later. We pray that the words that we've shared will be encouragement, that there'll be life and there'll be water. Oh my God, that there'll be light to them and that it will help guide them into their next, that will motivate them, that it will push them, that it will draw them closer uh, to activating and engaging in their vision, in their dream, and what you've destined for their lives. We decree and declare right now uh, that they are endowed with the power to operate, the power to move forward, the power to walk it out and to gauge in the process. We thank you that in the process, we'll gain all the strength that we need because we operate in you. We remain connected to your dream and visions on today that you've created in us. And we know that you will establish it, that you will yes. settle it and that it will be so. So we bless yeah. your people in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Y'all be blessed. Now y'all come on back next week for us. All right. Thank you so much, Pastor Grant. We're getting ready to get out of here. Y'all have a blessed day and listen, 
next week, Monday, grab your lunch, come on over here and learn for our Money Monday series. Y'all have a wonderful, blessed evening. See y'all on the next one. Blessings. Bye-bye. A heartfelt thank you to all of our subscribers who joined us for this video. If you have not already subscribed, go to our YouTube channel, The Juice Radio and Talk Show. Subscribe and click on the notification bell to be alerted whenever we go live. Join our private Juice community. Go to www.thejuicecommunity.com and sign up for free. Join us, The Juice Radio and Talk Show. We have our Money Monday financial series. It is a lunch and learn program at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time on Mondays. Also on Monday. Monday, we have our reality series and hot topics at 7 p.m. Wednesdays, we have Bible study at 7.30 p.m. Thursdays, we have church news at 7.30 p.m. We also offer motivational moments, happy marriage lifestyle, news from a godly perspective, movie reviews, as well as our single moms club, Let's Talk X millennials and of course, our Cooking with Clovis. Follow us on our podcast channel, The Juice Radio and Talk Show Podcast, streaming on all podcast platforms. A great big thank you to our podcast production company, Noye Podcast Productions. They can help you create your own podcast also. Contact them today at houseofnoye.com. Thank you to our sponsor, Custom Apparel Shop. Have them complete your embroidery work and silk screening needs. Do you need a logo created for your fashion apparel or company? Contact Israel Mason today. That is 786-657-7501. Thank you to our main sponsor, Truth and Triumph Ministries. Truth and Triumph Ministries, a ministry that cares about telling people the truth so they can triumph in life. Thank you, Truth and Triumph Ministries, for all you do.